Hi and welcome back. If you have been here for a little while, you know that microcurrent is a modality I love, use frequently and have used for quite a while. I just recently reviewed a new microcurrent device I have been using called Skin Patch. If you missed that video, I will link it down below. And then I also recently talked about the at-home skincare devices or modalities I use on a regular basis, microcurrent being one of them. I will also link that video down below. However, every time I talk about microcurrent, I get quite a few questions regarding the modality and also some concerns. One concern I hear more and more frequently lately is that microcurrent could possibly cause facial fat loss, which is of course something we do not want to happen. One viewer actually wrote me saying it makes complete sense to her that if microcurrent works our muscles, so basically gives them a slight workout, that it would melt facial fat. I also get quite a few questions regarding the modality as far as what does it do, does it actually work, and to be honest, there are not a lot of studies regarding microcurrent and skin rejuvenation. There are a handful of studies, again regarding microcurrent and skin rejuvenation, which actually look quite promising. But most evidence regarding microcurrent and skin is anecdotal. That being said, personally I have had great results using the modality, but I don't blame you if you are <laughs> skeptical. Now, since I am not an expert on microcurrent and I really wanted to answer your questions and address your concerns, I called Dr. Huang Inagen, the founder of Skin Patch, the new microcurrent device I have been using, and a PhD in biomedical engineering. Dr. Inagen has been studying the use of microcurrent in the medical field for over 20 years and I could not think of a better person to ask these questions to. So the first question I had for Dr. Inagen is what exactly does microcurrent actually do? Because I do think we are under the impression, and I have repeated this myself, that microcurrent contracts our muscles. So gives our muscles a bit of a workout, which then may or may not lead to facial fat loss, and this contraction of the muscles gives us a slight lift. But here is what Dr. Inagen has to say to that. We must uh, distinguish between the electric current used for contracting muscle from the one used for cell regeneration. It is very important to be always under the limits of the cell's physiology of the life so that the microcurrent, we talk microcurrent, so the uh, microamperes level has a very good trophic action on elastin fibers. It has also a very good action on inflammation. So a recovery for the functional of all the cells. Okay, This very weak um, intensity of electric current is a completely different from the widespread EMS or TAMS devices where the electric current is a thousand times higher, stronger than that. We are not targeting the contraction of the muscle, we are targeting the cell regeneration. So our electric current must be very physiological for the cells. So we have to uh, distinguish and uh, to be accurate, we have to talk about microcurrent, which is the level of intensity is microampere, to the millicurrent, which is dosed by milliamperes, thousand times the bigger, stronger. The target of microcurrent is the mitochondria. It targets the cells or tissue regeneration. And thanks to research, we are able to clearly dose it to stimulate cell regeneration we use uh, optimized intensity between uh, 100 and 600 microamperes in order to uh, stimulate or to boost cell metabolisms. No more, because beyond that, the cell life 
is uh, slowed down and even inhibited. So EMS uh, or, or milli current target this muscle contraction. We okay. target this, the scheme. <laughs> so I found this really interesting. And as Dr. Nagan pointed out, we really have to distinguish between microcurrent and EMS. Though so often these modalities get thrown in the same pot. And as Dr. Nagan said, more is not better. I am very guilty of thinking so, but more is not better when doing microcurrent. So we really want to make sure to stay within a physiological level, meaning a level that allows for healthy cell function and ATP production, which eventually will lead to collagen and elastin production. So a current that works in harmony with our body's own electrical system. So more is not better. In fact, a current too strong will deplete ATP and won't lead to what we want to happen, skin rejuvenation, collagen, and elastin production. So now we know that microcurrent actually does not contract our muscles. But the million dollar question is, can it still lead to facial fat loss? Um, it is right that we, until now, we focus uh, very much on the cell regeneration with its fiber side, elastin, collagen synthesis. But the real action of the microcurrent is the cell regeneration, all cells and all tissues, bone okay. cells, fat cells, skin cells, all of tissue cells that okay. recreate all of tissue cells, not the pathological cells. And on the other hand, Microcurrent has a very good action on pathological cells. The fat we, we accumulate when aging is a pathological fat. It slides down the face with sagging skin and it weighs down our face. This is not that. This fat that will give beautiful volume to the face. We need to get a new fat cells to create new fat cells with the cell regeneration. The microcurrent only restores. It revives, it restores when respecting our, uh, our genes. So I was so relieved hearing Dr. Inagen say that microcurrent does not cause facial fat loss. In fact, the opposite. And it makes complete sense. If microcurrent regenerates cells, that it would regenerate all cells. As Dr. Nagan said, skin cells, bone cells, and by the way, microcurrent is used in clinical settings to promote bone healing. So skin cells, bone cells, and fat cells. I also found interesting what Dr. Nagan said about the pathological fat as we are aging. So our fat pads drooping down as we are aging and how microcurrent can also address that. The next question I had for Dr. Inagen was, are there any other modalities which would work well in conjunction with microcurrent? Sure, uh, we're talking about uh, photomodulation, for example, like therapy, although uh, it is important to get um, good concentration of diodes and a high purity of the wavelengths, otherwise it uh, has no, no results. So. Uh, provided to have uh, thus this concentration of the uh, power of the diodes and uh, this purity of wavelength, uh, it can be a uh, good thing because we uh, uh, it has the same principle of action as microcurrent. But alone, the result is long to come. I know that will uh, physician combine uh, the microcurrent with the lead therapy. Uh, it can amplify the results. But I believe that the microcurrent remains the base treatment to relaunch the cell regeneration. So this was another answer I was happy to hear. Since most of you know, LED light therapy is another modality I love and use quite frequently. Now I did ask Dr. Inagen if there was a possibility that LED light therapy could cause facial fat loss. 
because that is a concern some of you have voiced. But Dr. Inagen admitted that she did not know enough about LED light therapy. However, Dr. Dre just recently made a video regarding LED light therapy and facial fat loss. If you have not seen that video, I will link it down below. But the short answer is no. LED light therapy also does not cause facial fat loss. Now, the last question I had for Dr. Inagen was, can you possibly overdo a good thing? So in other words, could you do microcurrent all day long if you wanted to? Or is there a point where too much actually causes the opposite to happen? As long as it remains physiologic for ourselves, we can use it as long as possible because it's always physiologic for, for ourselves. If they are not uh, in the process of uh, needing some, something, it will not harm them. So with age, our cell capacity for production and for regeneration declines with age. So stimulating with uh, this uh, kind of bioelectricity is very useful for our body. So we always need that to uh, get a better quality of life as we, we are living for a long time, longer, our time is longer. So uh, we need to, uh, to get a well appearance, a good appearance and uh, to, to be healthy. So uh, as it is a very physiologic and well dose optimized for the physiological uh, side as the uh, side, so there is no harm, there's no risk at all to use it daily. So I really hope this video was helpful. I am very grateful to Dr. Inagen for taking the call, answering our questions and addressing our concerns. Dr. Inagen apologized several times for her English not being good enough. And I assured her that her English was a lot better than my French. So I'm really grateful she took the call and answered our questions even though she was a bit self-conscious about her English. I think she did a great job. So any more questions or comments, please leave them down below. You know, I always love to hear from you. And that's it for this video. Until next time, bye. Thank you and sorry again for my English. Your English is, your English is great, much better than my no, French. <laughs> Thank you so, so much.